Quran is the last revelation of God and the principal source for every Muslim's faith and practice. It deals with all subjects that concern human beings, including wisdom, doctrine, worship, and law. There are two basic themes for the Quran. The first theme is the relationship between Allah, the creator of this world, and his creation. And the second theme is the relationship between people. The Quran provides guidelines for a just society, proper human conduct, and equitable economic principles. In the name of Allah, the Compassionate, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Compassionate, the Merciful, King of the Day of Judgment. You alone we worship, and to you alone we turn for help. Guide us on the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored, not of those who have incurred your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. Amen. For so many years, I used to ask myself when I saw people fighting each other, Oh Allah, why did you create us from different backgrounds? Men and women, whites and blacks, and people are fighting each other. Wasn't it a better idea that you could have created us all from the same background, coming from the same sex, speaking one language, same color, instead of people fighting each other? And then I found the answer to my question in the Quran, because in the Quran you can find an answer to any question that you have in your mind about the creation. I found it in a verse that has become a very dear verse to my heart. O mankind, we created you from a male and female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other. This verse was the answer to my question because diversity is a blessing. It's a blessing that we are different. Imagine that the people in this world could have been all from the same background, speaking the same language, eating the same food, looking all the same. This life could have been so boring, no chance to get to know each other or discover each other. And of course, some businesses could have gone out of business like tourism because travel where? See what? It's a boring world. But it's a blessing that we are different. Diversity is a blessing that people are abusing by attacking the homes and lands of each other. One of the remarkable things about Islam is the unique relationship between science and religion. Unlike other philosophies, we believe what bonds and holds religion and science together is stronger than what pulls them apart. It is through the knowledge of science that we are unable to unravel the mysteries of the divine, draw closer to him, and garner a respect for his awesome power day in and day out. Those people who have been blessed with knowledge are given high ranks in our faith because of their ability to interpret and explain to us the reality and the awesome nature of God Almighty, Allah. The closest advisor to Salahuddin, the Muslim leader who defeated the Crusaders in Palestine, was a Jewish scientist, Maimonides, one of the most famous Jewish scientists in Jewish history. Galileo was tried for having resumed the discoveries made by Copernicus on the rotation of the Earth. And he was condemned as a result of a mistaken interpretation of the Bible, since not a single scripture could reasonably be brought against him. I believe that if Galileo was to live in a Muslim country at that time, he would never have been persecuted or ended up in jail. Many Muslim scholars are considered to be the greatest scientists of their time, 
and some branches of science are considered to be either an Islamic innovation or indebted to Muslim scholars. Jabir ibn Hayyan, known in Latin as Geber, is recognized as the father of chemistry. Chemistry in Old English is alchemy, which came from the Arabic word for chemistry, alchemia. Al Khawarizmi, known in Latin as algorithm, invented algebra and was very instrumental in calculus and in the development of trigonometry and the use of algorithms. Ibn Sina, known in Latin as Avicenna, for 500 years his two books, The Canon of Medicine and The Book of Healing, were the authority on medicine. Al Zarawi, known in Latin as Albocasis, is recognized as the father of modern surgery. He invented 200 tools of surgery, and many of them are still in use until today. In Islam, seeking knowledge is something greatly praised. If you look carefully at the Qur'an, you'll find a large number of supplications, but only one supplication is ordering us to ask and beseech our Creator for an increase in something, and that is knowledge. The Qur'an, God's Word says, and say, O oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Thus in Islam, if somebody, whether male or female, sets out to seek knowledge for an ethical purpose to benefit humanity, to make life easier for others, they will be greatly rewarded by their Creator. After examining the Holy Scriptures in the light of modern science, Dr. Maurice Boucay, a famous French scientist, mentioned the following statement in his book, The Bible, the Quran, and Science. I could not find a single error in the Quran. I had to stop and ask myself, if a man was the author of the Quran, how could he have written facts in the seventh century that today are shown to be in keeping with modern scientific knowledge? Allah God Almighty said in the Quran, it is he who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon. They swim along, each in an orbit. The orbital movement of the two celestial bodies is confirmed by the data of modern science. And it is inconceivable that a man living in the seventh century AD, however knowledgeable he might have been in his day, could have imagined them. Almighty Allah said 1400 years ago about mountains. Have we not made the earth as a wide expanse and the mountains as stakes? The famous geologist Sir George Airy discovered that what we see on top of the earth, perceiving them as mountains, are just the tops of the mountains while most of their masses are embedded underground, exactly like a stake that is used to anchor a tent in the ground. He said, mountains are merely the tops of great masses of rock floating in a denser substratum as icebergs float in water. Allah said about his ability to return us back to life perfectly on the day of resurrection. Yes, we are able to fashion in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. 1400 years ago, some people wondered why God chose to mention the fingertips instead of mentioning something more complicated like the kidney or the eye. Today, science proved that this part of the body is one of the most complicated parts because it is carrying a unique fingerprint. Allah said in the Quran, whoever Allah guides, he opens his heart for Islam and whoever he lets go astray, he makes his chest constrain as if he is ascending gradually in the sky. 14 centuries ago, who could have known that as a man ascends gradually in the sky, oxygen decreases leading to the feeling of chest tightness. 
These must be the words of the Creator, Allah.